Well, we've been talking a whole long time about systems of linear equations and, and why, how we solve them. But we haven't really talked about why we have them. You see, when we did linear equations back many videos ago, we did a lot of word problems. And we always had to set those word problems up with having exactly one variable. And if we had more than one situation, we had to base it on that same variable, which takes a lot of thought. It takes a lot of thinking, it um, takes a lot of critical thinking, and it's not the easiest thing to do. So not that this doesn't involve thinking, but systems of linear equations makes things easier. You see, when you're not restrained by only one variable, when you can pick two variables, and find two equations, we can make a system of linear equations. And we have some very good techniques for solving that. So generally, um, setting up word problems with a system of linear equations can be easier than just setting up with one linear equation in one variable. So that's what this is entailed to do. Yes, we're talking about word problems, only two of them. They're already on the board. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing it. I just want to show you one last time that systems are very useful because they allow us to make easier choices when setting up some word problems instead of having to pre-think how to relate uh, one variable to a, a certain piece of information and another piece of information to that same variable, we can choose two different variables, find two equations, and set a system up. That's pretty cool. So let's look at a very basic one and then one that we can actually use in, in real life situations. So the sum of two numbers is negative 17. What do I call those two numbers? Well, in the past, I would have to call those two numbers x and then base this sum of the two numbers equals 17 to find another representation dealing with x. But when I'm allowed two equations, I'm also allowed two different variables. So if I'm thinking, man, I got two numbers, let's call one of them x and let's call one of them y, I couldn't do that up until we had systems of equations to deal with it. And now that we're all the way past graphing them and, and doing substitution and elimination, we have three techniques to have to solve those. So I've got two numbers, the sum of which is negative 17. The two numbers add to negative 17. No big deal. Now that we have the choice of two variables, that's an easy setup. Oh, and the difference, now this is the big thing. If you're ever going to pick two different variables, you're going to have to have two different equations to solve that. And you can extrapolate from that. If you have three variables, you'll need three equations in general. If you have four variables, four equations. That's when we start talking about uh, matrices and, and, and solving with Gaussian-Jordan elimination. I prefaced it two videos ago. Like, what in the world does that mean? When you go on to finite math or business math or we talk about uh, some of these algebraic techniques, we can do that, and this is the start of it, is using several variables and then several equations to solve those variables. But if I have two variables, I'm going to need two equations. Well, that's the second piece of information. The difference... is negative 69. That, that's awesome. Did you, did you see it right there? That's very cool. So as soon as we set that up, x plus y is negative 17, x minus y is negative 69, we get something that we're clearly familiar with. Now, that's a system. That's a system of linear equations. It's got two equations, two variables. It looks awesome. What's it set up for? Because right now, all, all bets are off as far as what I'm going to tell you what to do. You get to pick what to do. Do you want to graph it? Probably not. Do you want to do substitution method? That's a possibility. You could add y or subtract x or y here and be fine. What's it set up best for? Definitely elimination method. And hopefully, man, if that's popping in your head, like that's elimination. That is so awesome. You learned a lot if that's the case. That's great. So this is set up for elimination method because my variables are on one side. They're lined up. I have x's, I have y's, I have constants. I have one pair of variables with opposite terms. That's what I want. If I add, our variables eliminate. That's the nature of elimination method. On the right hand side, we get negative 86. If we divide by 2, negative 43. We're almost done. Now keep in mind what we're doing. Yes, we are solving for a point of intersection, which is very interesting in the context of the problem, but that's also giving one of our values. We know that one of our numbers is negative 43. If we use one of our original equations, use one of our numbers, it's negative 43.
and 43 to both sides. I think we get positive 26. Let's check. Let's see if that, if that sum of that adds to negative 17. So does negative 43 plus 26, right here, does negative 43 plus 26 add to negative 17? Um, yes, it looks like it. Looks like it does. Do, do, if we subtract them, negative 43 minus 26, do we get negative 69? Negative 43 minus 26, that's negative 69. So these two numbers add to negative 17. These two numbers have a difference of negative 69. Those are the two numbers that we're trying to find there. That's one way that we can use systems to solve word problems. Kind of a basic word problem, granted, but let's focus on another one. Let's look at this. Uh, let's say you borrow five grand. So you borrow $5,000 and you have two choices. You can borrow at 3% and 5%. Now naturally, you'd want to pick the 3%. But what if we had uh, we had budgeted that we want we have two hundred ten dollars to spend in interest and maybe this guy doesn't give you all of the five thousand so you're like wow I I can only give you up to like three thousand dollars here so you have to find somewhere else to borrow some portion of your money well let's find out how, what proportion we would need to spend in order to make that two thousand or sorry two hundred ten dollars of interest work well let's read through the problem. If we have a total of $5,000, what's that mean? Well, we, we have two different amounts that we're borrowing. We're going to have a 3% amount, and we're going to have a 5% amount. So let's call X the 3% money if you want. And let's call Y the 5% money. So did you get that? We're going to borrow some money, and we have some that's going to be at 3%, we're going to have some that be at 5%, but X is the amount of 3% money, Y is the amount of 5% money. How much total money are we going to borrow? It says 5,000. That means that our X money plus our Y money, it's got to be 5,000. Three percent money plus five percent. So our, our amount of money total, our x plus our y, what we're investing or what we're borrowing from both these these places is going to have to add up to five thousand. Now, if you don't know how to find uh, interest for if that's an annual interest rate for one year, to find a percentage of a number, we just multiply that number, even if it's interest rate. So we also know that, well, three percent. We're going to owe three percent of whatever we borrow from x. We're going to owe 5% of, I'm using that, that specifically, of means multiply, 5% of the money we borrow for Y. So we're going to have to borrow, and pay back 3% of the X, 3% times X, 0 0.03 times X, and we're going to have to pay 5% of whatever we borrow from Y. And we don't have more than $210 to spend on that. So we need that to add to $210. Let's, let's recap this. The amount of money adds to $5,000? Sure. The two places we're borrowing, we're going we're gonna to borrow $5,000. So X plus Y has got to add to $5,000. Our interest also has to add up. 3% of what we borrow from X plus 5% of what we borrow from Y, that's got to be $210 as well. That's pretty cool. That's another system of equations. What's it better suited to? Is it better suited to substitution or elimination? Well, you could do either. You could subtract x and do substitution, or you can eliminate variables. Now, one thing I will do for sure, if we're doing an elimination method, which is what I'm going to show you here, it's, it's set up better. We've got all variables on one side. Uh, we have variables lined up. Now, our decimals don't look so hot, so I'm going to move the decimal on all of our numbers. So x plus y equals 5,000 looks pretty good. Fractions and decimals, I don't like those for elimination method. Let's get rid of them. So 3x plus 5y and a equals $21,000. Man, now comes a big choice. Which which variable do you, want to, do you want to eliminate? Do you want to eliminate x's or do you want to eliminate y's? What's the appropriate choice? Doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you pick one of them to become negative. So I'm gonna multiply, because right now our terms are not opposite, 
and they don't even have opposite signs. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by, I bet you can think of it right now, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. 3 won't do it. If I do 3, I'll get 3x over 3x. That won't eliminate. I'll do negative 3. Now, every single term gets multiplied by negative 3, but when you see that, if you multiply x by negative 3, I'll have negative 3x. We'll have negative 3y. We can just put minus 3y. We'll have negative 15,000. But notice what that does. If I leave, I don't even have to multiply my bottom equation by anything. All it took was, hey, the LCM, the least common multiple, is 3 here for these two terms. It's 5 here. 3 is a smaller number. Let's multiply by the smaller number. But I also need opposite signs. I need opposite terms here. So multiply by 3, well, negative 3. Looks pretty good. So we set up our equation. We know the total adds to 5,000. We know 3% of our x, 5% of our y has to add to 210. That creates a system. It's best solved by elimination because all our variables are already on one side. We just have to get rid of some decimals, multiply by one number, and now we've got opposite terms. It looks really nice. If we add the system, 2y equals, let's add that, looks like 6,000. And if we divide by 2, we get 3,000. Now, here's why we write out what our variables are equal to before we start problems. It can get very confusing when you're, if you don't have that, think, oh yeah, this all works, and now I get 3,000. Well, what's the 3,000 to? Then you really have to go back and look at where your variables are to determine, well, is it 3% money or is it 5% money? Because right now, if we have this, that's really easy to see. I know that $3,000 should be invested or borrowed uh, borrowed at 5%. So we have $3,000 at 5% money. That means that we have, okay, the word it actually works. So why is 3,000, if y is 3,000, X is 2,000. And now we can answer the question. Give me a full sentence. Make sure you, you, you're explaining what, what this is. Uh, don't just say, uh, Y is 3,000. And X is 2,000. Well, well, yeah, but what's, what's that mean? Answer the question. How much should be invested at 3%? $2,000 should be should borrowed. It's the same thing, invested, borrowed, uh, same situation. But $2,000 should be borrowed at 3%, and $3,000 should be borrowed at 5%. A answer it in a way that makes sense to the average person, uh, where they could read what you have and make sense out of the word problem. Uh, that's what I, I would like you to do. So I, I'm really uh, I'm kind of trusting that, that these make sense for you. I, I really hope that I've explained this well enough for you to understand it, that you can take a kind of a basic word problem and a more advanced word problem and see the utility in the systems of, of linear equations. Because you, what, you can do this with one variable in most cases, but it's not in all cases, um, and it becomes much, much more difficult a lot of the time. So when we have systems open to us with substitution method or elimination method, either one, it allows us a broader range of, of methods for solving. And that's great. That means we can use more variables, which makes things easier to set up. I would challenge you to do this. I would challenge you to go back to the word problems that we did with substitution method, I would challenge you to go back to the word problems we did way back in linear equations and, and for the first time with one variable and see which ones for the, the linear equations can be solved with systems and go back to the substitution and see which ones would have been better served by elimination method. I, I challenge you to go back and look at those. At least look through them and go, oh yeah, I could have done that mixture problem uh, with two variables. I could have done that, that perimeter problem with two variables. I could have solved that substitution method with elimination method. It might have been easier that way instead of having to solve for a variable. See if you can go back. Really look through that stuff. And I promise you that when you get to doing your homework and your test, wherever you're going with it, um, that you'll make better choices and not be as confused as to, what do I do now? Practice it now. That way you have the appropriate choices in your head when you actually come to it. Uh, we're done with, with systems for a while. We're going to move on a little bit. We're going to talk about how to graph 
systems of linear inequalities. So I need you to refresh your memory on graphing before you make it to the next video. Go back and watch those, those videos on intercept method and slope intercept method of graphing. It's going to make your life so nice because if you can graph, I can teach you how to do systems of linear inequalities very, very easily. So I'll see you for that. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I hope this stuff is making sense to you. Bye.